Hey, this is Sean from The Driver's Perspective, and we're at Goodwin Racing in Rockies Me Automotive today to do a StopTech Big Brake Kit install and a couple other project updates for the Rotrex Supercharged Miata. Hope you enjoy. So on the table here we have a StopTech Big Brake Kit. This is for a 1.8 liter Miata. I do have a 1.6, or what used to be a 1.6 chassis. Uh, so we're going to be upgrading, so to speak, the whole car from 1.6 components to 1.8 components. I've already swapped out a lot of my brake parts, so some of this is going to be redundant, but we want to freshen up everything. It's been on there for a couple seasons. Starting with the StopTech Big Brake Kit, you have their proprietary caliper. I opted for the forged caliper instead of the billet caliper. It's a little bit heavier, uh, but the advantage is it's acting as a bigger heat sink. Um, on our calipers for this car, we got these stainless steel piston noses. I don't know if you can see those in there. That acts as another thermal barrier between the pad and the caliper. For the StopTech kit, they're an 11-inch front rotor with a proprietary design. They have their own uh, diamond pillar design for the vanes. And a uh, very heavy 11-inch rotor, which is good because that means there's more mass to uh, act as a heat sink in the brakes. We're also replacing the factory rear calipers uh, with a remanufactured 1.8 caliper and pad carrier on the car. It's the factory 1.6 calipers, so I think it's time for an upgrade. They're probably about 30 years old right now, um, and that's assuming they haven't been replaced at some point, uh, which I think they probably have. On the rear, uh, we're just going with a slotted 1.8 uh, factory Miata rotor. Uh, currently there's a sport rotor on the rear and an 1175 in the front so we're actually going down on brake uh, rotor size uh, but the StopTech rotors are a lot better made than a lot of the other ones on the market so these are pretty much as thermally efficient as the stuff we have on the car right now which is pretty nice. Also with the StopTech kit we're getting rid of the, the Willwood one inch master cylinder and putting on a 7 8 factory master cylinder from Centric. And with that, we're also doing a proportioning valve uh, from the 1.8 or the 1.6, depends on uh, what fits with the brackets in there. We're going to try and put a lot of the OEM parts back in. We've just finished swapping the uh, sport rear rotors and 1.6 calipers over to the StopTech 1.8 slotted. Uh, rear rotors and a factory 1.8 rear caliper with PFC 11 pads. So now that this is done, we'll move to the front and start our uh, install there. If you're going to the track a lot, you should invest in some caliper temperature stickers uh, so you can monitor the caliper temperatures. This is really important, I found, uh, to know when you need to service your calipers. Uh, particularly if you uh, push up to the 400 degree Fahrenheit range, you really should reseal those calipers before the next event. And if you can keep them between 300 and 392 degrees, you know, lower the better, um, it'll prolong the service life of your caliper. which. If you're going to the track 12 times a year, you should probably be resealing these Willwood or StopTech calipers uh, before the start of every season. So one of the unique features of the StopTech caliper is this bridge bolt, which increases the stiffness. And this is also available for the Dynapro, uh, Dynapro calipers, but it's usually not used. These calipers use a pad that's quite a bit thicker than the Willwood calipers. Um, you can still get more pad volume with the Willwood calipers if you go to the six piston um, Dynapro and a few of the other models, but out of the gate you're already, already getting four more millimeters of pad, so it's gonna last you a little bit longer on the track. So for those of you with singular motorsports brake ducts, when you install the StopTech kit, uh, make sure you, to use a, a good motivation hammer to uh, tweak the edge of the brake duct that protects the tie rod end uh, and give yourself a little bit of clearance. I mean it's pretty tight but that should be enough. Um, you can see at the top it's equally as tight. Um, if your rotor's wobbling that much you probably got some pretty big problems on your hands. Alright so both sides of the brake kit are installed now. Um, most of it's pretty straightforward so there wasn't really a need to film a step by step and the instructions are uh, written pretty well. Uh, the only thing that I would note is when you're installing the brake line over here, you need to be careful with the orientation. You need the angle pointed up towards the center of the caliper. Um, so you might need to just you know, tighten uh, each one a little bit at a time just so you get the orientation right and you don't have the line rubbing on anything. Um, the second thing is in the kit, uh, there's a universal adapter fitting provided for the bottom. You can just throw that in the trash. The brake lines are designed to go straight into the caliper. No need for an adapter fitting or anything like that. So up front here, we got rid of the Willwood 1-inch master cylinder and went with a 7 8 
uh, factory 1.8 uh, master cylinder from Centric. We also uninstalled the Willwood proportioning valve like I said earlier uh, because the StopTech kit is engineered to balance the car uh, with the correct piston sizes front and rear um, so there shouldn't be a need for that. Um, we'll see how it goes. I have performance friction pads front and rear. Um, in worst case I can always drop down the friction level on the rear pad if I find that the balance isn't quite right uh, but I suspect everything's gonna be okay. Uh, real straightforward install here. Just remember when you install one of these bench bleed it before before you put it in the car. That way you're not chasing air bubbles and uh, you don't have a soft pedal. Up here we have the Can Auto chassis brace. This ties your two toe toe points or tie down points of the back of the car together. Um, never installed a brace like this before so I'm going to put some miles on the on it on the street on the track and see if we notice any improvement. Um, big benefit though is the part is really light. It's probably under uh, two pounds. Uh, it's a honeycomb aluminum brace. Um, it installs using a 14 millimeter bolt and a 14 millimeter nut up there uh, where it's a stud. On the passenger side of the car it's a little bit difficult to get to uh, but with a couple extensions and a ratchet uh, you can pretty much uh, tighten them down no problem. Uh, other than that we'll see how it goes. Alright so that wraps this video up. Uh, we didn't get time to install the scope 2 throttle body today but that's okay we'll get to it this week before we go to Chuckwalla. We still got two weeks. Um, if you have any questions, comment below. Thanks for watching.